welcome back to Break Time With. Today I have the absolute privilege of being joined by Chris Palmer, who's worked in multiple international schools, most recently in Argentina and Malaysia. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Could you start us off, Chris, by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got to working in international schools? Sure can. Um, yeah, well, I'm Australian and uh, did my training in Australia and um, quite quickly realised that, well, found out, I guess, that international schools existed and got quite mm -hmm. excited about that idea because I've always been keen on travelling and exploring and teaching in sort of a different context. Um, so uh, my wife is also a teacher and we, we saw a position come up in Argentina and kind of went for it and that was really the beginning and uh didn't know much about it to be honest didn't know much about what it would mean to to teach in sort of one of these uh international schools but i guess just jumped at the opportunity and kind of didn't look back it was it's been an amazing amazing journey and it's been about 10 years that we were overseas and um and working as music teachers uh mm -hmm. and i'm a music teacher uh, also did a little bit of, you know, a few other bits and pieces along the way, but mainly working in music, in theatre, um, okay. theatre productions and working with orchestras and bands and all sorts of, you know, anything that goes really in terms of music in, in the schools I've worked at. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, most recently I was head of music um, at, at a large school in Malaysia and have since just recently moved to Australia to, mm -hmm. yeah, to pursue a PhD, which is looking at music in international schools. So I'm really interested in the concept and um, what goes on and the kind of whole community around it. And I'm really excited to be exploring that more in the next year or two. Brilliant. It sounds like you've got lots of experience that you'll be able to use for that PhD. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you've talked to us previously, Chris, about <laughs> you know, heads of music and anybody working in music in an international school environment can and should get involved with the marketing team. Could you tell us a bit more about your thoughts on that, please? Yeah, I guess um, I think it's it's something that just evolved for me in my role. But mm. um, when we when as a head of music, you're running so many events in international schools and even with COVID, um, most heads of music in international schools would attest to this that mm -hmm. we were still running lots of events probably a lot less than before but um it just became more and more apparent to me that um, music and, and being a head of music in a in a large international school was a way for the school to showcase something something special and so uh as i was putting on events and my team was putting on events we were more and more becoming involved with kind of being marketers, you know, because we wanted our events to showcase the students, of course, and that was the central idea, but also to showcase what the school offers um, and to showcase the music department. And so we would pretty quickly realize that getting in touch with the marketing team and working with them was essential to that and mm -hmm. sort of creating a collaboration between the music department and the marketing team would help kind of mutually because we would obviously have lots of events which would help to market the school as such or um, show off what the students mm -hmm. are doing and what the school's doing and for the marketing team it would give them lots of content and lots of ideas and lots of things to to share about the school so it kind of worked really nicely as a collaboration um, and that's always been my approach is that the marketing team at the, both the schools, especially that I've worked in more recently, uh, were really willing to collaborate. And that's that was always great. So, yeah. That's great. I think international schools particularly are really collaborative and supportive environments where mm. everybody does chip in, like excellent teamwork. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more, Chris, about the types of music events that you put on and how those were marketed? Yeah. Um, so I guess there would be a couple of different levels of scale in terms of the mm -hmm. events. So we would have big whole school events where you would have 200 musicians playing from across primary to, you know, year wow. 12 or 13. 
um, which would then mean that their families would be attending or friends of families and, and all that kind of thing. So you would have these big scale events, um, mm -hmm. like it could be an orchestral event or a combined choir event or something like a, a special event, like a winter Christmas concert or yeah. um, something like that. We'd also have very large scale musicals where mm -hmm. you could do, you know, like a five night run, you know, almost in a sort of professional setup where you would have tickets and, um, you know, all the bells and whistles of a, of a musical that you would see yeah. um, anywhere. And with, you know, 500 people attending per, per event. Um, so you had these kind of large scale events, also collaborative events across the region. So we'd often have big collaborative events around Asia, um, maybe just within Malaysia or wider in Asia, where you'd have multiple schools coming together. So you could have, you know, seven schools and they would all bring 10 or 15 students each to put together a big orchestra of say 100 students and then um you would put on you know rehearsals and things and then a final concert um and then you'd have smaller events throughout the year you know rock band concerts which might be mm -hmm. more inside in you know inter school or intra school yeah um you'd have smaller recitals individual recitals things linked to the curriculum things linked to the extracurricular program so it would just sort of like funnel down from these sort of big scale events to, to small ones. Um, my, I think my last yeah. count was in, in a pre COVID year, I think something like 35 events per year. Wow. So an average one every kind of 10 days then. I've never really thought of it that yeah, way. That's yeah. A lot. I think that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, um, I had a big team, so the team would always, you know, take on different leadership roles and and run it so it was never down to one person but yeah there's there's a lot right yeah sounds like a lot how many students were, were all students involved in music in some way say that again sorry sorry i was just wondering how many students in a school in your experience have been involved in music events ah. and productions i mean yeah hundreds um mm -hmm. My previous school was enrollment was up around 1800 to 2000 yeah, and cool. yeah and so you know we had a, an instrumental program attached to the school just for the school students and we'd have 350 students taking individual lessons a week mm -hmm. so you know that's that um then plus the ones that don't do lessons within school I never sort of took down numbers every year, but I would say at least, you know, half would be wow. quite involved in something throughout the year. Wow. So it's really, really important for the culture of the school as well then. I definitely think so. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, you've, you've talked to us a little, Chris, about how the musicals, the theatrical productions, these orchestral events, can be really important in terms of community engagement and that in turn having a role in promoting an international school. Mm. How do you I, think that that does create that sense of community engagement? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you used the word before culture, um, not only mm -hmm. for the students, but for the whole community. Yeah. And, you know, just the simple thing of standing at the door of one of these concerts and seeing so many smiles just yeah. because they're at a concert or at an event. Um, and it's not kind of every event within a school sort of community that people just walk in happily and naturally smiling most of the time and probably the same on the way out, you know, mm -hmm. so there's just this general sense of well being and, and happiness and generally a sense of, positivity around these events that people are going to come to with that sense and leave with a with a sense mm -hmm. of positivity um and i think it's it just you know to see students on the stage performing together especially in the bigger concerts where you've got these big collaborative events it's exciting it's yeah. it brings energy it's it brings this kind of sense of wow we're part of something here mm -hmm. in this school um, and then when you talk about the smaller events when you have, I don't know, a small recital of 10 students doing their first ever performance and they're all nervous, but they play their first little piece and all the parents and teachers that are watching are just, you know, so proud of that, that student. And they go off and tell everyone, oh, I saw a little, you know, Johnny do his first violin performance. It was amazing. And just bringing that sense of 
positivity again. Um, I just think that's, you know, really a central part of that culture building process of a school to be yeah. part of that, that sense, that feeling. Brilliant. And you can really mm. get a sense of that from listening to you talk about it. I think that comes across really strongly. Um, mm. And I know that you're really passionate about the music element then becoming a competitive advantage for an international school. Did you find that it, it did become a competitive advantage at your schools? Yeah, it's that's a really interesting question. And it's it's a hard one because, yeah. you know, music in essence for me is is like a well-being sort of experience it's yeah. it's all about an experience and it's an emotional connection to that experience but you can't really deny that it's it, when it's commodified which it is in the world mm -hmm. um generally that there can be an element of com competitive advantage that comes with it and i i guess my reflection on that is that i've just seen it mainly anecdotally or through conversation with parents where for example a child was involved in a musical and loved it and they were planning on moving schools but because of that experience in the musical they've said to me hey chris we're actually we've decided to stay another year or two years wow. instead of sending my child to boarding school in in england or moving to another school for whatever reason we're going to stay uh, and that's that's happened i can definitely think of one probably two of a similar case um so there's kind of that aspect but definitely you know i've been involved in lots of discussions at kind of like an upper level in leadership and even mm -hmm. kind of with the board and with with groups of um you know the heads of school talking about how we can use the facilities the music facilities to attract families, parents, students to a school. Yeah. Um, that's really clear. Like if we have a nice music department, we will hopefully attract, you know, people who want to do music and be involved in this program. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things we could probably go into, but they're the sort of two that I can come yeah, up with pretty confidently. Definitely. I think one is having the, you know, the facilities themselves, but I also think there is a really interesting insight there in terms of music has an avenue to, to an improved well-being for students and, and staff, it sounds like as well, um, yeah, which of course sure. then is an advantage for the school. I know that lots of parents inquire about well-being in a school now. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, so as somebody from a teaching music background and very musical, what did you think are some of the essential skills that you learned when working with your marketing team? Mm. Um, it's an interesting question. I, I think I, I should say that I do have a bit of a background with sort of business and I did a bit of yeah. business sort of studies at university cool. and undergrad and have, you know, I have a brother who's kind of really into entrepreneurial stuff and is quite tech savvy, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, and I think I've, I've been also involved in the wider music industry where I learned some things too, but I think mm. combine that with working with the marketing team, you know, just little things like making sure that your branding, if you like to say, or your kind of profile of a music department and what mm -hmm. you offer is just really clear um, and really consistent. Yeah. And um, making sure that, yeah, uh it, it's i mean i think that's probably it just making sure that our message is really clear yeah. um, and that we're all kind of on the same page in terms of vision and values brilliant um mm. would you have any advice for anybody working as a music teacher or head of music in another international school who perhaps wants to start promoting some of the events they do with their marketing team mm. i mean i think on a practical level having some skills in in marketing or like the the kind of basics of things like graphic design um yeah. video editing uh, website design and development is really useful because you can be very specific you can say like i want this kind of approach to the poster for the christmas concert or the, the yeah. orchestra concert i want you know nice space on the image and i want this font and i want these colors and you can sort of talk in language like that um, 
and I mean, something that I've really enjoyed doing is designing websites for the music department so that I can have a have that sense of clarity um, and working with the marketing team to make sure it's on, you know, in the same color scheme as the whole mm -hmm. school marketing and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if I didn't know how to build a basic website, even if it's like a Google site, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't even know where to start. So I think some yeah. of those basic skills are really important and software like Canva is a great yeah. place to start and, you know, things like that. So absolutely. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. But Absolutely it's, does. No, I think yeah. it's really useful. I know lots of our uh, schools use Canva and I've dabbled for the first time in it in the last few weeks. So um, definitely think I should brush up my own game there, personally. <laughs> um, Chris, before I let you get on with the rest of your evening then, could you tell us what your favourite event that you had was, if you could pick one? Yeah, it is a hard question. Of course. Um, can I can I pick two? Yeah, of course. Okay, so my favorite one would probably be the primary school musical, mm -hmm. um, and that's mainly because I had, you know, a lot of involvement with it over the years uh, in my time in Malaysia. But I just think it's such an amazing age group to work with in musical yeah. theater, and I've had the sort of privilege of working with such an amazing team uh, at my school to put those productions together. And whilst it was pretty big um, and stressful and all that sort of stuff, it was so joyful and such mm -hmm. an amazing experience. Like I get sort of the goosebumps thinking about those productions. Wow. Um, so yeah, there's that one. But then I've mentioned it a couple of times, like these small recitals with the beginners mm -hmm. was another thing that we put together and it would be sort of every half term. And I just loved seeing a first time musician get up to perform and just that nervousness, but excitement and the proud moment there of I did it and the parent, I'm so proud of you and the teacher, I'm so proud. And just that whole community atmosphere that those small little recitals would bring. Uh, I absolutely love that atmosphere too. Yeah, I can, we can really hear how much you love it. And <laughs> it must be such a proud moment to see them, you know, taking that step and showing what you know the skills they've developed and the confidence they've developed to be able to go and do that as well yeah totally yeah, yeah it really is wonderful um chris this has been really really insightful thank you so much for sharing your insight your knowledge your expertise with us today on the friday club um, i know this will be really really interesting for the international schools who watch these interviews and read our articles um, what's next for you with your PhD? Yeah, great. Yeah. And, yeah. And thanks for your, thanks for your message there. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I'm actually just taking a little bit of time to, to just kind of chill for a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, there's been a bit of a crazy move from Asia to get back into yeah. Australia. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of time, but yeah, the PhD, it's kind of in its beginning stages. I've been on it for about a year. So I'm sort of in, kind of set up phase. Um, so I'm really excited just to get into that. Um, I'm hoping to sort of lay the groundwork for the rest of this calendar year. And then mm -hmm. next year I can get into the research process. I'm really hoping to get back into Asia and um, that's kind of where I want to do the bulk of my research in mm -hmm. probably in Malaysia, but possibly uh, outside in sort of the wider Asian region. So hopefully traveling back and doing some interviews and chatting and catching up focus groups, that kind of thing with some of my colleagues. So I'm, you know, I really get along with in the region. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just working on a couple of projects here in Australia, a couple of small contracts working in some local schools here to support in primary music education. Um, and that's, that's it at the moment. So yeah, we'll see well, where it goes. It sounds busy. Um, I hope you do get a good rest and some good downtime and good luck with your PhD. Great. Thanks, Sophie. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, been a really good guest, a brilliant guest, and really grateful for your support of the Friday Club. Cheers. It's a pleasure. Thank you.